Hi everyone, my name is Virginia Duan and I'm your host for the Nuna Army podcast. I'm a writer, a bilingual homeschooling mom of four, and also a BTS Dan. Uh, I created the Nuna Army podcast because I found myself giving daily TED Talks about BTS to my friends and actually anyone who would listen. And so I thought, why not create a podcast? All right. Um, So this is my first podcast for myself, and uh, hopefully it's not too terrible. The thing is, I created this podcast because I was really sick of seeing uh, BTS's fandom ARMY being portrayed as these mindless teenagers um, or just these screaming fangirls. And honestly, uh, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with being a screaming fangirl um, teenager or otherwise. Men don't get criticized for being just as fanatic over sports. Um, I don't see why art is any different. And in this case, art is embodied in seven incredibly pretty human beings. I found BTS about two years ago. Um, And there's army, there's army lore that says you find BTS when you need them. And I think that's totally true. Last year I was going through um, a mid-year midlife crisis, I guess. I was, I turned, I was turning 40 and I just, I wanted to burn my whole life. Uh, Even though I got everything that I thought I wanted. I was married, had four kids, was starting my writing career. Uh, I just, you know, I thought a lot of things were going for me, I think. And yet I was just so, so unhappy. Um, I just so deeply unhappy and so and actually I was mostly unhappy because I was angry I was really really angry at just how I had wasted my life I felt like I wasted my youth you know it's really lonely being a woman being Asian American being 41 It's really lonely being a mom. Being a writer. (laughs) It's just really lonely. A big part of why I think BTS has struck such a chord in me or means so much to me is they speak to that loneliness. I feel as if they are friends. I I feel as if I'm less alone. That I have companions on this journey of of identity and grief and anger and love not that this is interesting to you unless if you personally know me and love me but my word of the year for 2020 is to be bold And part of that boldness is to talk about the things that I love to talk about. And I love to talk about BTS. It's actually shocking how easily I can turn every single conversation into BTS. I don't even try. It just happens. Um, And that's because I am always thinking about BTS. So... That's why I'm here. Ultimately, this podcast is for me. And if you happen to stumble upon it and enjoy it, I suppose that is all right. I will allow it. 
I will allow you to listen to me talk about my favorite thing in the entire world. Um, it's part of me feels as if I should be embarrassed uh, because I am 41 years old. I have four children. I'm happily married. I have a good life. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like as if I need to justify uh, my existence. <laughs> I feel like as if I, as, as an older BTS fan, Nuna Army, we rise. I feel as if I have to somehow explain to people that I'm a normal person uh, who just happens to really like BTS um, in a totally normal, reasonable amount. But it's totally not true because uh, I am I am totally obsessed <laughs> with BTS. I I say I love them a normal amount, but I'm I'm not actually sure what a normal amount is. So I feel as if the only possible response is to love them with the unbridled enthusiasm and thirst and joy that I experience. Um, you know how like some people gush over their babies uh, I have never gushed over my babies and I had four of them so I had plenty of practice um, but I gush over BTS <laughs> so you know that's me and uh, I I just want to tell people that I love BTS because why not? Why, why shouldn't I? For the longest time, I kept my uh, BTS status, fan status, kind of on the down low. Uh, I found them two years ago, January 2018, uh, ac totally accidentally. Uh, I was actually looking for C-pop. I bilingual homeschool my four kids in Chinese and um, I, I, my thing is uh, my online alter ego. I have a blog called Mandarin Mama and I write, I even have a book published about it actually on how to teach my kids Chinese. So part of my thing is to make sure as much of their media as possible is in Chinese. Um, because if it's if it's fun then you know then then your kids will naturally gravitate towards them more. this is so much backstory i'm i apologize um but i'm actually not sorry because this is my podcast <laughs> so so yeah i was looking for c-pop and i searched in youtube for you know chinese pop music and what popped up was XO. Uh, you know, to this day, I'm not actually sure if you say XO or EXO. Who knows? Uh, I'll just call it XO because it seems easier to say. And yeah, they ha they have Mandarin versions of their of their K-pop songs. And I think the first one I found was Overdose, and. I was immediately sucked in because A, how can you not? And B, um, how can you not? They were so pretty. They, you know, they were so stylized. They were so cool. They could dance. It was just, it like hit all the marks for me. They were Asian. They were singing in Chinese. They were hot. They could dance. They were hot. They were hot. Uh, and so, yeah, so I like, uh, of course, try to find more after hit, hitting repeat repeatedly. Wow, that was terrible. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean. And so, so yeah, so I was very confused because I had never listened to K-pop really before. My only exposure to K-pop prior to that was Psy, uh, Gangnam Style, because y you'd have to, you know, be buried under a rock to not have known about Gangnam Style. Even my children knew about Gangnam Style. And uh, yeah, and I was never really into Mando Pop or C-Pop or 
any any anything that smacked of the motherland um and we can discuss that later but yeah but like yeah I was never really that interested in I, I knew the names kind of but I didn't really know them and so because of my children uh, and for science I um yeah I try I found every single possible Mandarin version of EXO songs um which there's like three maybe four I don't know there used to be XOM right and uh I found it very confusing and I was very bewildered but because YouTube has you know their mind reading algorithms you know I suggested NCT and GOT7 and BTS and I like the idiot I was or the idiot is too strong of a word because I was just ignorant I just didn't know uh, I thought that every k-pop band had Mandarin versions of their songs because it seemed that they also had Japanese versions so why wouldn't they have Mandarin versions and it makes sense because China is a very big market and I'm also Chinese American or Taiwanese Chinese Taiwanese American and um, and being an American <laughs> I'm kind of self-centered I feel like everything is oriented around us of course everything should be in English of course everything should be in Chinese I mean because aren't we the most aren't these the two most dominant languages on earth um, little did I know that now I'm like no why can't why couldn't I have been Korean <laughs> this would be so much easier <laughs> if I was Korean ah the jealousy jealousy on multiple fronts but we can talk about that later um yeah so I I was I got sucked in thanks to the YouTube algorithm and I found BTS's songs and I thought they were fine uh, I wasn't particularly I, I thought they were fine um, and yeah so that's how I discovered BTS and um, it's uh, and, and I, I think I even mentioned it a few times on Facebook I was like, hey, you know, oh, cool. I found this song. Everyone, uh, XO song. I found, oh, oh, yeah, all these things about K-pop. And I just started dabbling. And probably because there's so many ARMY and so many fans that I just got kind of sucked in. I don't know. I, you know, I watched reaction videos. I started watching their dance practice videos. Um, this was during the Her era because I think one of the f the two mo the two newest videos i saw of bts were mic drop remix a banger of course and dna which i hated i hated dna uh, i thought they looked weird i and I, I just i couldn't get into it and it was so bright it was just too many colors so i was actually more into xo and got seven and nct i didn't yeah that, like to me it was I was not a stan of anything. Uh, I just I just like music and I like pretty people who can dance. Yeah, so I kept it on the down low for a really long time. I tried to keep BTS and my like swift and unrelenting fall down the rabbit hole. I tried to keep that as no chill as possible on all my social media i i stalked reddit i never commented I, ne I didn't even have an account and then yeah so a good nine months of me just just checking things out and i was totally in denial um but i i loved them i loved bts everything yeah they just consumed all my waking hours I I was very chronological about it I went through all their run BTS episodes um, I very systematically decided at some point I think I decided my goal was to consume every single possible piece of BTS content ever so whether it was a tweet, you know, a video, a, 
a Bong Tom Bomb, a BTS episode, uh, whatever it was, I was determined to consume it. Spoiler alert, I have not been able to do so uh, because how they just create too much. There's just too much information. There's just too much stuff. Um, and, and I, uh, I dig it. I really dig it. And so now, now I, yeah, there's just too much stuff. You know what? Somewhere along the way, even as recently as a few months ago or a few weeks ago, I decided that I'm not going to keep BTS on the down low anymore. I already talked about it all the time in real life with people. Um, and so I think I just stopped caring. I stopped trying to justify or explain myself. Um, because this is, this is who I am. I, I mean, I am not only BTS because that, that would be sad, but, but also because I feel like life would not be richer if it was only BTS. Gradually, I stopped caring about what other people thought about my, uh, I mean, there is no other word for it, obsession over BTS, uh, that I was ashamed because I don't really feel shame about this. It was just more that I felt as if other people shouldn't be subject, subjected to, I didn't want to be the BTS person. You know how there's like Star Wars people or, you know, Harry Potter people. And it seems like that's all they talk about. I don't want to be that person. Oh, no, no, no. Even better example. Like the, the people who only talk about their children, right? Like you ask them how they're doing and they only talk about their kids. You ask them what they like. They only talk about their kids. Like everything is about their kids. Uh, and that's okay, I think. Um, because if that's what they really love and care about, then th that they should talk about it. But I, I think because of being a mom and being Asian American mom at that. I, I didn't, I didn't want, I'm not quite sure what I'm trying to say. If you're a mom and that's all you talk about and that's your kids, I don't want to shame you. Uh, but I think it just makes me wonder or I feel a little sad that there isn't anything else going on for you, um, as a, for them as a person, right? Like when I asked about how they were doing, they talked about their kids, but how are they doing? So this is my meandering way of saying, I did not want to be the BTS person. Like everything out of my mouth was BTS and, or, or, oh, oh, it's also like, and it's totally true. Uh, it's like really pushy Christians. I can say this because I used to be one. Um, pushy, that is. I, I think I still identify as Christian for the most part. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> super cr pushy Christians who, like, befriend you with ulterior motives to, like, bring you to Jesus and, like, you know, you, you know like, they're not really your friend. They just wanna, they just kind of hover and they just look, look for every opportunity to talk about how the love of Christ will will satisfy all things. And really the love of Christ is going to like make me less thirsty. I mean, yes, I guess that's a literal parable in the Bible, but I'm pretty sure they're not talking about like sexual satisfaction. Oh my God. I just said, that. you know what? If this is, a, this is the first podcast episode, you might as well get used to the fact that I say incredibly inappropriate things and find them very funny. Um, so let's just get that out of the way. I will most likely offend you. And and I don't mean that in a like way to set up racist jokes or anything. That's not, that's not what I mean. I just mean that like, I am very blunt, um, and not very sugar Cody, <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't want to be that BTS pushy person cause that's annoying, but I feel as if 
I've just stopped caring. Uh, if my friends know me, if my friends love me, then they'll know that, that I love BTS and they don't care and they'll, they'll tease me. That's fine. I don't mind teasing. Um, because I mean, what, what's the purpose of having friends if you can't tease each other? I mean, God, come on. Uh, that's, that's what we do, right? Like, um, and so, yeah, I think ever since I started talking about BTS a lot more on my personal social media, in my professional work, I try to you guys, this is how much I love BTS. BTS is in my official bio, like my official writer bio. Like on the bios I put with, um, you know, when I write for other sites, <laughs> like they're, they're, um, that's, that's how serious of an army I am. Okay. It's on all my Twitter and like profile. It's on all my profiles and yeah, I mean, you're only given like 140 characters and BTS is in my profiles. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I'm, I, I just decided, fuck it. You know, I love BTS. My goal, my goal is so that, is so that I can interview them in person and then also try not to die as it happens. Um, and that's my goal. And so everything I do is with that intent. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I want other things also, but uh, that would be like the pinnacle of my professional and personal career, like just meshing very nicely. Um, so, so yeah, it's a, this is my shot. Y'all. I'm, this is, I'm shooting it. And uh, yeah, so... <laughs> I also tend to ramble. I, I, I'm, I would apologize, but I feel like sometimes that's when I'm funniest. Uh, so yeah, that's, I decided just, Hey, I love BTS and I'm going to talk about them as much as I want to, which is pretty much all the time. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's why this podcast is here. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, you deserve a medal. If we had a higher budget, I would give you one. But I, I don't even know if you guys can hear the screaming of my children in the background, but it's there. And I don't know why they're screaming. It's like it's fucking 721 in the morning and they're screaming. I just, I don't, why? Like, why would you do that? Um, but I, I feel as if also that um, being a mother of four children has also uniquely prepared me for the chaos that is BTS. And I appreciate that. All right. Um, I'm going to end it here because I, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But I feel much better because now that I've done one podcast episode, maybe the next few won't be quite so painful to get started. Like I seriously started and stopped like a bajillion times. Um, but thank you. Thank you for listening. And for, uh, I hope to talk about other things other than myself, but, but, you know, I feel like the reason why so many of us love BTS is through the lens of what they've done for us. So, and how we interpret them. So I'm going to talk about myself because I'm kind of a narcissist, uh, but that's okay. I mean, I don't know what, what, <laughs> all right. So Thank you again for joining me and listening to my first podcast about BTS, um, the Nuna Army podcast is signing off.